that fire department in the city organized fire department. We spent some of them out. And I just want to know, you know, what do we have? How are people being impacted by the insurance rates? I understand that some are going up and there is no such thing as uh, fire rate. And that has a whole lot to do with the disposable income that some people have because if you are in a better situation, you don't pay as much in insurance. And so people can, you know, spend more or save more or do a better job of getting their children educated. So just where are we? And thank you so much for being here. For coming. It's passed out to you. Good. First of all, good morning, Board of uh, As you see passed out to you, there was a, a fire rating information passed out to you all, which is include the you know, classes rating for the townships, as well as some of the obstacles we face, as well as some of the equipment and some of uh, the funds to, to allocate that equipment. Mr. Perkins, Mr. Five Point, is to answer any specifics that you need to fall into. Again, the information here is just taken from the rating bureau. It explains uh, the requirements for a class nine, a class eight. We'll put some thoughts in there on budget, you know, money issues, some obstacles we face. If you read that, we'll certainly get back with you any questions you have. Um, it, it, as far as firing, I guess, let me, let me speak to that issue. When, when the city of Byron incorporated, the fire department, the volunteer fire department, the county's volunteer fire department that was serving the area did have a class seven. Recently, uh, the county department, which is still providing primary service, and the city of Byron's fire department was graded jointly by the rating bureau and they were able to keep that class seven in the city of Byron. The areas outside of there are still served by the Byron Volunteer Fire Department, which is the county. Some of that area is a class seven, but some is not because of breaks in the water system. What I want to know is what can we do to improve the situation? Where do we need to be advocates about uh, larger border lines, better placement of fire hydrants, and uh, where we need volunteer fire companies? And as far as the ratings are concerned, <coughs> insurance prices are high. I would agree with that. I mean, my fire insurance went up also. The insurance companies are doing that. Can you speak up? The insurance companies are doing that because of rate increases mainly. But where we do have class tens, we can improve and get class nines, which will save you approximately fifteen percent, or a class eight, which will save you approximately forty percent on your annual premium. Of course, there are requirements that you have to meet, things you have to do. We do have some shortfalls on with equipment and uh, buildings which would require a substantial amount of money to put in place. Well, I think, um, you know, fire ratings and all of that are key for economic development purposes. You know, um, most people are not going to move into areas where it's a tent, okay? Yes. Because they want to save some money on insurance things. Uh, it would be very difficult to get uh, businesses to start up, whereas they, there's not adequate uh, fire protection. You got you know small lines and things like that. So maybe uh, it would help us if we were to see a map that took the county, uh, you know, in the unincorporated areas and in the small towns that are served by volunteer companies, and just listed out. Uh, where the septums, where the tens. We can do that. We can provide you. We can provide us with that. It would give us an idea. And then I think you also need to come before this board and let this board know what we need to be working on to enhance the whole area and make it attractive to development, be it retail, industrial, or residential. And we need to get that soon. We can provide that. And, and some of the information in this may, may answer that. We, we can. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now con uh, continue with our printed agenda. We'll uh, now, Mr. Uh, President, I'm sorry, go ahead. There was one other thing. You know, we talked about uh, something being added. Yes, I think this is real important. I 
I, I got something out to supervisor and his neighbors on that last Friday. But I was approached <coughs> last week by the director of maintenance for Hines County, uh, Mr. Harrington, who had received a request from some Mississippi crush that wanted to use two of the fields at the Davis Road Park. Right. In my Right. And previously, I've been advised that when a request of that nature came before uh, the county, that it was handled individually by the supervisor of a particular district and Mr. Harrington. And I thought that maybe it needed to come before uh, this board. And if you, I don't know if everybody received their copy, but I'd like to distribute copies to everyone. I got received mine, okay. yes. And I have a, uh, an updated one because August 31st is on the copy that you received. Right. And this has December 31st. Right. Um, Mr. Harrington could probably fill us in on the details of what they've done in the past and what they're requesting now. But there's no money in it for the county except that this group would pay the light bill at the park for the remainder of the contracted uh, period. And while we're talking about recreation, I just want to throw something out and we'll come back at uh, a future board meeting and deal with it. Uh, but I don't think there's a, a recreation commission uh, for Hines County. And maybe we need to begin to, to look at, at that so that there could be a recreation plan. In fact, there's no plan in the park. But there's some things that we need in place now or ASAP so that we can do some things to improve the quality of life outside of, of the city. So if uh, yeah. Mr. Harrington could come. Mr. Harrington, and I think that's uh, in order, uh, Dr. Walker. We, uh, at one point, I think two or three years ago, tried to establish one, but for some reason it was not established. But uh, uh, that will certainly, I think, be a discussion that we can have at the next board meeting uh, as regarding to establishing um, Mr. Harrington, uh, go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President, Board of Supervisors. I, what we have here is just the crush, the Mississippi Crush Fast Pitch Association. They uh, lease two fields out each year for at Davis Road location for practice. They use these fields for practice. Sometimes they have games there. Uh, this is uh, this part. This is located in District Four, David Road Park, and they were um, asked. They do have the liability insurance in place for this time period. Okay. Um, so, Dr. Walker, is it a motion that you want to make to make approve this? I would like to move that we approve this Second. Uh, with the terms as they have been in the past, and uh, in the future, we may want to look at them. Okay. I think what you're, if I hear what you're saying correctly is that you would like for this to go directly to the county administrator for board action yes. as opposed to uh, to a division. Okay. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Davis, would you please make note of that? Yes, sir. All right. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of? Yes. yes. Opposed to? Motion passes. Thank you very much, Dr. Walker. We'll continue our printed agenda. Uh, we will go through Supervisor Stokes' items, and then from that point, we will go. I see the Election Commission is back, and uh, we'll go back to the Election Commission after that. But uh, we'll go to Honorable Supervisor Ken Stokes District. Back. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I have Ms. Lula Santa, but I won't Ms. Rita, let me do her because of her age. She has a hard time walking. She would raise your hand, Ms. Santa. And uh, she has an issue tonight. Would you explain? Okay. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the board. My name is Kathy Grant. I'm here with my neighbor, Ms. Sandifer, due to uh, property taxes at our house. We've been out here several times trying to get this resolved. Um, she had been exempt back in 1992 or 96. I have her paperwork here. Make a long story short, her house has been sold. It's been sold maybe two or three times. And she's gone back in, purchasing the house, 
and she's never received one of these certified letters to let her know that the property was up for sale. She should have been exempt. She has paperwork back in the 90s where she was supposed to, excuse me, oh, to the nurse. At this point, she's 81, 80, 80 or 81. But she's and been I exempt. I think, Mr. President, what the concern is, is over the years, and I don't know if the tax assessment is in here, over the years, if you reach a certain age, your exemption continues to follow you. Well, for, for some reason, somebody did something in her from following and her property been sold, right. and she does not have the income to keep buying it back, and she's 80 plus years of age. So they're saying that she should have been exempt, and there should have been a, a continuous exemption uh, that somebody dropped the ball on. And she's concerned it's affecting her health and everything else. I asked her to come speak to the board. Uh, I don't know if the uh, final outcome would be to talk to Mr. Stokes, the tax assessor, but someone needs to make sure that we help uh, this LA. Could you ask Mr. Stokes to come in, Chief? Yes, sir. And I also want to add that it's also good for sale again on August the 29th. That's why we are here now. We're trying to make sure. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll wait for Mr. Stokes to come in and see if he can answer your question. But I think that the. Uh, the age or the cutoff of age for the tax is 75, so um, we're going from there. Mr. Stokes, we have Ms. Sandiford, who's 81, and her property, she coming up will be sold Come to the podium, Mr. Stokes. At, the, uh, at the land sale, and uh, she should be exempt, been exempt, and we're trying to find out what can we do to uh, correct this injustice. First of all, uh, Mr. Biden, I would need to look at it and see exactly what you're talking about. Okay, what well, we'll do, we'll let them go with you to your office. Okay, because I have no clue. All right. I'm going to give you the wrong information. Well, all right, we'll let them go with you, and you can give us a report back. Okay. okay. Thank you, Ms. Sandico, for being patient. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I'll move to my next item. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Seager Reed to come forward. Uh, Mr. Reed. Mr. President is one of those good Samaritans who recently retired from the VA who want to work with the senior citizens and teach them how to use a computer. And I wanted him, I asked him to come to this board and kind of explain because you have a number of people, 50, 40, older, who really can't use a computer and, and some are afraid that some of the daycare centers they work with them to try to train them. But Mr. Reed, could you explain the program you want to do, please? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Good morning and uh, good morning to the board. Uh, as Mr. Stokes has just mentioned, uh, after 30 years of uh, career with the Veterans Administration, I retired at the end of June. And part of my commitment was to give back to the community for all that I've gained in experience and training with the VA. Uh, we work with students at Jackson State, and I'm proud to see Ms. Prince, one of our students that we trained, who's moved on to bigger and better things. So part of my uh, commitment is to now work with the senior citizens, developing uh, training for them to use the computers, particularly with the internet and other experiences, so that they can uh, really have more of communications uh, with the community and with their relatives and what have you. Uh, part of the challenge there is I'm finding that there are centers, and Mr. Stokes indicated there is a center right near our church on Bailey Avenue that has uh, the capabilities, but the access uh, is pretty much a challenge. When we're talking about seniors and we're really talking about super seniors, like the young lady that uh, just left. 80 years plus, uh, needing transportation, needing awareness, those sorts of things to get them to the train. There's tons of information on the, com on the internet to train seniors, but if they have no clue about how to access, some don't even know what a mouse is, for instance. Uh, some families don't have computers in their homes. So having uh, on-site uh, capabilities in the local neighborhoods, uh, the senior citizens' uh, locations, 
education and training. That's part of our initiative. So bottom line up front, I'm not here to ask for any money. I'm not here to uh, complain. I have no complaints. The only thing that I'm asking and requesting of the board is for your support. Uh, support in helping us to increase the awareness that we are embarking upon this initiative uh, for computer training. So in your contacts, wherever they may be, to make sure that they know that uh, we are out here and we're developing computer programming and training for our senior citizens. The other part that we're requesting is for your support in terms of access to resources. We know that there are uh, funding and grants that's available. Uh, I heard from Mr. Vance, uh, companies like that I'm sure would be interested in supporting this type of initiative. So we need your uh, support in, in that direction as well. Uh, your endorsement if, as we develop grants and we go out on our own to seek funding. We know the challenges you have uh, at the county in terms of finances, but we're just simply asking for your support and awareness of this initiative. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you very much, and we uh, appreciate you bringing it forth. And uh, if you just contact me in my office, and we'll talk about a uh, letter of support uh, from the board. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we have Mr. Chris Coleman. And I want to thank, I don't know if any of his neighbors came with him, uh, and some of the newer board members, uh, Mr. Coleman uh, and some of his neighbors, they had homes and property built, and the developers never did complete this roadway. And they were waiting on this case with Supervisor Fisher were here, where they were going to try to get these uh, developers uh, to complete their roadway. And I've written over by Mr. Coleman's and others. It's like big old craters, uh, nice, beautiful homes, and then you can't get home because of craters. And public works taking a position we can't accept because it's not uh, up to par. And then they are in the K 22, and I don't know what happened with that. That lawsuit, and maybe uh, Mr. Friedrich will let us know later about that. But we're going to hear again from from these citizens and see if we create a win-win. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning board. Yeah. I'm Chris Coleman. I have here with me Richard Smith, Ruby Parks, James Crowley, and Harry Horton. And as Supervisor Stokes said, we own we all own homes in the Midway State Subdivision. We're here about a year ago, and what we did is we asked the board to accept our roads and county, as county roads so um, they can get the repairs made that they need. At that time, the board expressed a desire to help us out, but I think there was some concern that if we all spent the money and it wasn't authorized, that you could be held individual out. So what we did is we got with the state auditor's office to see how we could get this done. And it just so happens there, there was a mirror image case over in Warren County. And um, the Warren County Board of Supervisors asked our Attorney General what could they do? Could the county accept these roads? And the Attorney General said, yes, they can waive the requirements under the circumstances and accept them. And um, that opinion is the James Sherrod opinion, and I have a copy here. For each of you all, you would like to have a copy of that yes. opinion. Could you pass my opinion? I think once the board considers this particular opinion, um, they will likewise agree that you guys can accept the roads under the circumstances. I think that's the first hurdle. The second hurdle is, how do we pay for repairs? Now, what they did in the Sherrod case was, they, um, they petitioned to have a survey, an estimate done, and figured out how much it was going to cost. And pursuant to a statutory provision, they assessed the cost as a tax over like a 20 year period to the homeowners. Now, what we're proposing is that the board pay for repairs. Because, you know, this ain't our baby. We didn't create this issue. But we're stuck with the problem. But if the board doesn't want to pay.
pay for repairs. I think the consensus among us is that we will we will go the statutory route and have this tax imposed over a long period of time, so it won't be so significant to the home. So moved. Uh, okay, let me. Uh, okay, it's been moved. Uh, we have a question from everybody, basically. Uh, we go, Mr. Hunter, and then Dr. Walker, then Ms. Calhoun. Okay, and then we'll come back to see about a second. Okay. Well, I, I'd just like to, you know, know what it's going to cost and what the, what's, what's the cost. Uh, I, that's the same question we have, uh, Supervisor Hunter. Yeah. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get an assessment done, an estimate, to see Probably what it's going to cost. Through uh, our public works department. Let me that would be fine with us. Can we, is it okay for us to do an assessment? Or is it something we're going to do? Or attorney would have to chime in on that if we do our assessment. I know when you said we can't do the work, but we can't look at can you look at the room? I guess that would be the reason okay. Right. Okay. I'm to review the opinion, but um, the growth cannot be taken upon the county inventory unless it meets certain certain repairs. But I would have to review this opinion in light of what the said today. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that was the same issue with one county board of supervisors had. You know, accepting the roads on a condition, which is why they wrote the attorney general and said, "Hey, can we do this?" And he said, "They're your rules. You can wait on the circumstances." And I, it's clearly set forth in that opinion. Okay, uh, Dr. Walker. Okay. First of all, I think we need to be given ample opportunity to read this opinion from the attorney general's office, so that whatever we do, we'll have the full understanding of what the opinion states. The second thing that I'd like to know is who developed that road? Who's the one from that subdivision? Levon Owens and uh, Just Chapman. Clyde Chapman. Uh, what, what I would hate to see this county do, as it's done in a number of cases, too many in fact, is accept a road that may not meet, uh, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, okay? But we have to be careful about what we do. Um, the road needs to meet spe certain specifications before we accept it. We can accept it in any condition, but I think the, the wise thing for this board to do is to make sure that it comes up to acceptable standards and uh, the public works director may agree with me or disagree with me. I've had a chance to work with uh, a number of situations like this on the Warren County Board of uh, in, in past years, so we probably need to get a good assessment of what we're dealing with before we vote on this matter. Okay, uh, Mrs. Gallon. Yes, I would like to hear from our public works director in regards to this matter. Mr. Prelitz. Well, at this time, uh, Mr. Prelitz. <laughs> We have uh, looked at these roads in the past, and the reason that they're not acceptable is because there are a lot of uh, uh, sub-base failures, and the road has not been resurfaced. So normally, our procedures is to have the road fixed, then resurface, then accept the road once we have inspected it. Okay. Uh, who fixes it? Who pays who fixes it? Well, normally the developer does, but in this case, the developer did not. Is this one of the developers that we uh, found uh, legal action against? I think we only filed legal action against one as a test case. Right. What was the results? Currently, that matter is pending before the courts we filed the contempt action. Um, the court did find that the developer was supposed to go ahead and complete that road, and they did not, so we're currently in litigation right now. Okay. All right, we have Mr. Uh, Stokes and Mr. Walker. Uh, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, so that you know, board members can have time to uh, look at the opinion, I place this item uh, on the agenda at the next meeting. Uh, but I don't want to play with the time because it's been over a year. And lovely home, big old crates in the middle of it. it it's just a sad, it's a sad commentary. Uh, the issue, and I, and I think we brought it up a few weeks ago about a special assessment. And it was said that we the county could not do a special assessment, 
But we need some way, because they said they don't mind it on their tax bill, and I know this rules up. Somebody got to find out how we can do uh, the tax thing, because with a special assessment, that would cover it. But that'll give us two weeks to find out how we can do the tax thing. They said they'll pay for it to be repaired. And the account, I'm, the road manager, public works director said he'll go out and assess it, and that way we'll have all the numbers. But I'm thinking, Mr. President, this is what we're going to try to do for a number, because I think it was about, I mean, about 20. 18. Yeah, and that many projects, and people waiting and waiting. They got a company coming and visitors, and they, they dodge and plot all over. This is probably going to be our best way to get out this problem to me, and I know in the future these developers can't do that because we have safeguards. But all these people waiting for something to happen, it's up to us now to uh, bite the bullet and make something happen. Thanks, brother. We have Mr. Walker and then Ms. Calhoun. I remove my second. I mean my motion, brother. Right. Thank you. And I'll be brief. I had a chance to uh, go out to Barrington, and you should see um, the the streets at Barrington. Nice houses, and it's uh, it's an obstacle course. <laughs> Same with me. Uh, yeah. I was worse than that. Same with oh, yeah. me. Really? Beautiful. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, all of you must have, uh, what do you call these things? Off road? ATVs and things? Um, but I went out to Mallard's Lake, and I'm not so sure that all of the problem out there was caused, Mr. Felix, by people, um, by big trucks. <coughs> because it seems like some of that. Uh, resulted from uh, all the work not being done when people moved out there. You can look at the texture of the road surface, which they, they, they call it alligator. Alligator crack. Yeah, alligator cracks. So uh, I, I really think we need to do a better job of looking at the condition of the roads, the streets, and these subdivisions before we accept it. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Walker. Mrs. Callum? I, I have um, uh, two questions. Has the developer abandoned his work on the road, his responsibility to uh, research, uh, to uh, paving the road? And secondly, uh, has the developer's bond expired? And why is it that Hines County is not pursuing legal action? Okay, the bond is by 2000, and we've sent the developer letters and have not received any responses. And why is it that Trans County is not pursuing legal action? That was something that the board attorney had to address. I, I, I think the proper thing to do would be to pursue legal action. Now, I, I'm not singling out any one individual. But as long as we allow developers' bonds to expire, and then we do not come back and take any kind of legal action, we're going to see more and more roads being dumped on the government, on Hines County government, to be repaired. And that's not right. The developer has a responsibility, and we should uh, make sure that he fulfills that responsibility. Well, like this okay. guy, we do have those checks and balances in place to make sure they find the next time. But I still think this board has, has a, uh, a physical responsibility to uh, pursue legal action. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Calhoun. Uh, that's a board decision, and Mr. Prince, if you just would prepare something well, for the board. I'd like to make a motion at this time. Okay. Go ahead, please. I know that Supervisor Stubbs has placed this, I mean, um, yeah, Supervisor Stubbs placed this item on the agenda, but I believe that we um, uh, move forward in pursuing taking legal action against a developer to assume the responsible, physical responsibility of making for this program. To clarify your motion, are you referring to just a developer or everyone that has a, everyone that has a, that abandoned their particular responsibility? Yeah. Okay, it's been moved, Dr. Walker. I, I would I would think that we may want to look into what actions can be taken and report back to this board because uh, statutes of limitations may have expired. 
uh, legal action may not be an option at this point. But uh, maybe if the motion, if you would consider this a friendly uh, amendment, that we would look into what actions this board may take in cases such, specifically with the midway homeowners and other similar cases in, in the county. I think we have, even though my requirements or the bonds, the previous developers has hired, have we gone to court? They went to court now. And what was the outcome? I don't recall. The judge uh, sided with the county, but the developer still didn't put the final answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go back to the courts for that particular problem. Okay, uh, Ms. Scow. They continue to get by, and the sad thing about it is that, that they are getting overall the residents of those subdivisions. Okay, Ms. Scow, do you accept Dr. Walker's uh, amendment to your request? Okay, it's been moved and properly. Are you going to second? Properly second. All those in favor? Uh, what was the second? The second was the amendment friendly one. <clears throat> we look into what actions can be taken, specifically in the Midway situation and others. Now, with that, with that issue, it's not going to delay them. Now, they no. have, they have come. For, it's not going to delay them because they say they will volunteer. Okay, all no. right. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of? Yes. Opposed to? Motion passes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for bringing us to the board. I uh, hope that we can have some in the next couple of weeks where we can move forward. It's just one of about 18 subdivisions, uh, basically in South Jackson, that's. Um, suffered similar place. Thank you very much. Now, the Reverend came, uh, I think, two weeks ago. I don't remember his name. The one who worked with the youth, the former pro football player. Yes. Um, he didn't get a chance to speak, but he did come on to the first Okay. All right. Well, thank you very thank much. You, okay. Mr. Stokes, continue, please. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to ask our to advise Mr. Bigman to come forward, please. Funds that are that we are considering repurposing from the uh, from the Byron Clinton Quarter pool of funds that was repurposed a few years ago uh, from a, a project fund to the Byron Clinton Quarter funds are bond funds that are were issued as a as a tax taxable um, municipal financing transaction for the purpose of I believe of building a parking garage so. Those are the, that's the nature of the funds that are there. They're not federal funds. They are borrowed dollars by the county uh, uh, in the uh, public debt capital markets. Now, now, in your opinion, uh, as the funding advisor for the county, because these are taxable bonds and things of that nature, and they're not federal funds, can they be moved? They were moved in there, so I would, I would, I would assume that they could be repurposed out. That would be mine. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Callum, you have a question? Yes, I, I think every member on this board practically understands that um, with the, re the funds that initially were, the bond funds that were initially issued for the garage um, were repurposed, and those bonds could be moved out, but never until this day if there was any discussion regarding um, taking funds from the uh, garage uh, now the, the, the funds that were set aside for the bottom pit for never was there any discussion to utilize those particular funds it was always the federal funds so we all understand the difference between the uh, bond funds and the federal funds and how they can be utilized now, as far as repurposing the uh, bond, bond bonds for recreational 
items, then that too would have to be checked and checked out legally because we do have a general purpose for which even those funds can be used. I agree with you, but you know the county only has one type of debt, really. They don't have it. It doesn't have revenue debt. It has general obligation debt. So uh, any any borrowing that the county does is mean, subject to the GO rules uh, of the uh, you know of the statutes of the state of Mississippi. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, well that you know the purpose is that these bonds uh, are proposed being used for will fit within. The, you know, fit correctly within the confines of the statutes of the general obligation statute of the state. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Walker. I, I, I would think that uh, this is not um, an opinion matter, but a legal matter, and that uh, there needs to be legal research to determine whether funds can be moved for this purpose. Section 1991 um, allows the monies to be moved over. Um, in terms of moving them generally to the recreation fund, that might be a little broad, but the permissible purposes um, for the money are the permissible purposes for the money are enumerated in 1991, um, and some of those purposes are, you know, to repay roads and for jails and such. We may need to look in terms of narrowing um, where we're going to use it for for um, item number six. Under Mr. Stokes, recreation fund may be a little too broad, but um, under 1991, those monies can be moved over. Okay. What so, purpose? Uh, there are several permissible purposes um, that are enumerated in Mississippi Code Section 1991, and some of those include um, monies for jails and to pay roads and such. Jails and pay roads? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Stokes, uh, what do you want to do with uh, that particular motion? You want to hold it or allow them to look at it more, or how would you want to handle it? Well, I think uh, uh, the attorney uh, uh, gave us uh, an opinion, and I hope we can call it and say that there was no problem with uh, uh, moving the funds, but I, I don't mind to bring that in the meeting, President. That'd be fine. We'll hold it until the end of the meeting. Make sure we get in touch with Mr. Gator. Mr. Bingham, thank you very much. Thank you. We will continue. Uh, is that all you have, Mr. Stokes? Yes, sir. Yes, thank thank you so much. All right. We will now go to... Oh, I'll hold up. I'll move further. Okay. Um, what we'll do, uh, Mrs. Davis, I know we have uh, some attorneys here that we need to uh, uh, bring up, but I also want to go ahead and get the election commission uh, up as well. We'll go ahead and do um, the attorney...